Hello everyone from Seoul, where we are in the middle of a very intense summer storm. So I thought this would be the perfect time to film my eerie summer reads video. I have 10 listed for you and I'm excited to share. I think that they have different ways of being spooky, eerie, creepy. I sort of did this by accident. I read a bunch of creepy books all in a row and I thought, wow, weirdly this is a vibe for summer and I know that there is this kind of, I don't know if it's a new term, but this idea of summer ween where you watch scary movies and read scary books and you just prepare for Halloween um, during summer. I love that. So I think I'm just going to dive straight in. We'll start off tame. How about that? So the first book I want to recommend is a book that I read very recently and I don't think it would come to mind immediately when you want a kind of creepy read, but this is The Guest by Emma Klein. She also wrote The Girls, which I think is eerie and terrifying and very summery in its own right. So I would also recommend The Girls, but to talk about The Guest, this is a relatively short novel about a woman who has a relationship with an older, very, very wealthy man, and she's staying up in... she doesn't specify, but it's very much like the Cape, like their summer home in this tiny little bay, east coast, seaside town where also only the wealthy go. Something occurs where she is no longer welcome. The only problem is if she were to go back to her home in New York City, there is someone very dangerous looking for her. She has gotten herself into just this horribly tangled web of trouble and she spends the entirety of the book trying to find a way to outrun all of the trouble that is coming at her. The reason I'm including it, because it's not necessarily eerie, there's just this kind of sickening feeling to it. You are so nervous about her getting caught. She's just lying and lying and lying and she as a person makes you feel a little bit sick to your stomach, some of the things that she does, and it's just a summer weekend. It's like the week before Memorial Day. So it has these kind of idyllic East Coast Americana summer vibes to it, but at the same time you feel so sick to your stomach and worried. And so that's why I think it deserves a spot on the list. It's definitely a little bit different. So if you want something that is very linked to reality, there is no form of magic, it's not outright like this is going to be a scary story, but for me personally I felt quite unsettled and a little disturbed set alongside beautiful East Coast Beach scenery. So that is The Guest by Emma Klein. Next up is a book that I read last month or the month prior and that is The Honeys. This is absolutely horror straight off the bat. No, it's not fronting as anything else. This is a horror book. It follows twins who are pretty inseparable until one twin comes home from camp and tries to murder the other one. Mm? So our twin who survived an attempted murder decides to go to the summer camp where they used to go, but because of certain events that we slowly learn about throughout the plot, uh, they have decided not to continue, but their twin did. And that is what really caused that initial riff in them. Things started to fall apart there. How did we get to murder though? Because that's a big jump. At the summer camp, it is just very off-putting. There is just the general tension of our main character is non-binary. And of course, in a co-ed sleepover summer camp, you have to define yourself as either sleeping in the girl's cabin or the boy's cabin. It's a lot of old money, conservative, very set in your ways, hostility, um, the environment just literally just for that reason alone feels very scary, but then it starts to get very, 
how do I even describe it? There is a group of girls from the girls cabin called the honeys and they are just mysterious ethereal they kind of give off like virgin suicide vibes where they are just these girls and and they are just magnetic and strange and so removed and that is the crew that our main character's twin ran with before she went a little bit off the deep end and so our main character tries to infiltrate that group and it all just feels so creepy you know that the camp is hiding a big secret it starts to get really trippy there's a lot of kind of hallucination sequences dream sequences a lot of insect imagery specifically bees it's a lot of honey um it's gruesome it's a horror book but it takes place at a summer camp there's just something about it that i loved and it had so many layers of creepy right like it had the kind of fantastical almost almost magical realism thing going on that you unpack um but then there's also just the real life of feeling unsafe in your body and your surroundings because you don't fit into the binary that exists at this camp and in life and it was just so nuts um and i highly recommend it if you were looking for something just like that because i feel like there aren't many things that fall into that particular category <laughs> and then last month i read our crooked hearts this is by the same author as the hazelwood which is a book that i really wanted to like i loved the writing style and the imagery and how it was very much a dark eerie fairy tale but for some reason the hazelwood didn't hit and i didn't read the second book but our crooked hearts did in fact hit we follow a girl who is on summer vacation and something very strange is going on with her mother and then just a bunch of creepy things start to happen it's like i said it's summer vacation so she goes to a party with her boyfriend and they're driving home on a very dark street and this girl just runs across the road in the middle of the night totally naked just like jets across the road into the woods um somebody starts leaving dead rabbits at their doorstep everything feels really creepy and as we start to unravel the truth as we start to unravel the mother's past um and the daughter's present it's very just eerie she writes creepy stuff very well i thought that once a lot of the pieces got put together i felt like i would like to wrap this up um i think that it got a little bit slow at the very end but overall the atmosphere was excellent for a creepy summer read um the way that she described just what they did during summer it was so accurate to summer in the suburbs they literally her neighbor and her just like can't sleep so they drive to the walmart and walk around like that's a it was so americana summer suburb but also witchcraft and very eerie stuff going on so that is our crooked hearts the next book i read i think i read last year actually and it is summer suns this book wasn't necessarily a hit for me but i feel like it could be a hit for a lot of people and it checks all of the boxes of summer eerie just a gothic dark academia everything is weird feeling <laughs> summer suns follows our main character who is heading down to start school and he is heading down to meet his best friend i think he's actually like his adopted brother but anyway just a, a very close person in his life a dear friend we'll call him his brother his brother had gone ahead to do some summer school classes they are going to school at vanderbilt which is in tennessee so his brother was already down there he set everything up he was like we got roommates i'm gonna take these classes i'll be there for your first day of school we'll start school together it will be great but the week before our main character is set to move eddie dies by an apparent 
suicide and our main guy is like that just does not track they're like it's usually a very unbelievable shocking thing but he was like no this is beyond like this is not right so he moves into the house and his brother has spent the summer getting to know the roommates making friends working on things etc and our main guy just has to kind of come in here and it's almost like he's taking his brother's place he is desperately trying to figure things out but it's all just very weird um we go into the academic side what they were studying what his brother was maybe trying to unearth there is a whole load of history about the two of them um it's just really creepy there's a lot of car racing they spend a lot of the book high as i remember like they just are kind of stoned so for me the book was a pacing that i didn't really like but if you're looking for another very dark academia creepy i think it's called like a queer southern gothic novel summer suns <laughs> After that is a book I've recommended before, specifically because it is a creepy summer read, and that is The Wicked Deep. This takes place in a very small town in Oregon, the Pacific Northwest, and every summer the town experiences something called swan season. This is a week or two in summer when way back in the 1800s, the villagers at the time accused three sisters of witchcraft and drowned them in the bay. And ever since then, every year during swan season, one boy is killed, or maybe more, but at least one boy is drowned. <gasps> Our main girl has lived there her whole life, so she knows swan season very well, and she is very confused as to why a teenage boy waltzes in out of nowhere right at the beginning of swan season. She's like, haven't you heard? You guys die. Like, this week in particular, why are you coming to our tiny town? now he has a mystery he wants to unravel and they are brought together by very strange circumstances it was intriguing i definitely read it a few years ago i think that maybe my stance on it might have changed if i were to have read it right now it's definitely just got it almost feels like practical magic and hocus pocus and strangely Twilight just because of the setting. Um, a very odd little book if you're interested in witchcraft and boats. <laughs> Next up, recommending a book that I remember having to stop reading because it scared me so much, and that is Annihilation. It has been made into a film. I think I liked the reading experience more, but I do think that the film was actually quite good. We follow a scientist who is part of a group that is exploring something called Area X, and it's told kind of in a journal form, her like field journal. How do I explain it? There is just this odd piece of land that needs to be explored and every time they send in a crew they don't come back but her husband who was on the mission prior to her did come back but not right there was something very wrong with him his memories were messed up he was just not her husband and pretty soon after that he passed away in the exact same manner as everyone else on his crew so she's basically like i have nothing else to lose like I, my husband was the only thing i really cared about in this world so if i don't come back from this i don't come back from this let's go on this mission as they get deeper and deeper into area x things get stranger and stranger they are given faulty information they start to question their own eyes and senses it's so eerie and i just remember reading it i was alone in my apartment and i was reading it and i had to literally like look up look around and remind myself that i was like in new york city at the time i was like you are in manhattan right now you are not in the jungle calm down it was very just scary so if you're interested in a kind of more scientific horror. I highly recommend Annihilation. I didn't continue the series, but I might, re I would definitely return to it. It was just a 
simple fact of I didn't have time. But Annihilation is creepy good. Creepy good. After that, to lighten the mood, my best friend's exorcism. This was so camp. It's hilarious, but also very scary, and it absolutely is a horror book. Um, the cover is incredible. And this just reads like a cheesy 80s horror film. We follow a group of girls and one of the friends gets possessed by the devil. I think the beginning was just great because it felt he captures the 80s so well. It was just such a vibe to read it. And then once we actually got into the possession and the exorcisms, it, it didn't hold me quite as much as I wanted it to, but it was still a really good time, a very quick read, very easy, and just a good, scary time. It is definitely horror, once again, so just be aware. There's a lot of creepy things in here, um, so just, I mean, be careful, but a good time. My best friend's exorcism. Okay, now we're getting into the ones that I just recently read and I'm so excited. So the next book I want to recommend is Into the Drowning Deep. Oh my goodness, I really enjoyed this book. I think it could have been a hundred pages shorter, but regardless, I will give it a pass. I had a really great time with this. Into the Drowning Deep is a mermaid horror novel. Basically, there was an entertainment company that opened a TV channel similar to Discovery or Sci-Fi Network and they focused on making these mockumentaries. So they did one about the Loch Ness Monster, they did one about Bigfoot, and their next big thing that they were going to do was about mermaids. It's, it's an incredibly huge budget, it's so popular. They got this huge team of people, like actual real scientists, the filming crew, the person who was gonna be the host of the documentary, everything, this giant boat, and they shipped them out and they never came back. They found the boat uh, months, weeks later, empty except for lots of blood. And so maybe 10 years later, we follow a bunch of different characters, but mainly the younger sister of one of the passengers. Her sister was going to be the host of the documentary, right? Um, and she happens to be a marine biologist specializing in sonography, um, so analyzing sounds in the ocean, but she is mainly doing this so that she can prove or disprove that there are mermaids, prove or disprove that her sister was killed by something other than a freak storm. So when she's approached by the network to go out there again, and make another documentary, but this time on what happened to the ship, she's like, I'm there. We follow a bunch of different characters, which I feel like kind of hurt the story because there were just so many things. It was just really long. Um, I, in the beginning, really liked how much it went into the science of the sea, but once the action started happening, it was drawn out a little too much. So I will warn you that probably the last 25%, maybe even 30% is a little bit of a schlog, but the ending, the very end is, I thought, really good. Um, so yeah, I, I really, really loved it. I had to push myself through a couple hundred pages and then I enjoyed the ending. Um, if you like, again, this kind of scientific approach, really enjoyed it. If you're down for like creepy ocean, deep sea, stuff yeah yeah so good very visual i i can picture the boat so well i would i would actually love to see it be made into a film i think they could do it really well um into the drowning deep Ooh. after that i read the twisted ones um this is by t kingfisher and i had read nettle and bone and it just wasn't my cup of tea so i wasn't sure about continuing, but I was actually talking about creepy books and someone recommended a different book by this author um, as a creepy summer read. 
I read that one it felt a little more autumn to me so I'm gonna put this one instead this is the twisted ones we follow a girl who is sent to her grandma's house her grandma has passed away grandma Grandpa. grandma her grandma has passed away and she is in charge of emptying out the house um apparently her grandma was a hoarder so she's emptying out the house so that they can clean it and they're probably not going to be able to sell it but her dad is like it's a fire hazard if you could do it it would mean a lot to me and she was like sure thing so her and her dog who is a big character in the book so if you love books about dogs okay um, her and her dog move in, they start cleaning stuff out, and things get creepy. She finds a journal written by her step-grandfather, who she didn't really know but liked. Her grandma was a witch. She hated her grandma, okay? Um, so she always kind of pitied her grandpa. Finds his journal, and it is really creepy so if you're into things that come out of the woods empty houses i i like the reason it reminded me so much of summer is it had this kind of rhythm to it where she's cleaning the house and i don't know why but something about that task i love reading books about people emptying out houses it, it's such a weird niche thing but like i really like that um and it just because of that kind of daily task of cleaning things out it just for some reason felt like something you do over summer and yeah there's weird weird things in the woods she's in a teeny tiny town in north carolina it was just creepy that's all i can say is it was a really creepy book but it also had humor to it there are multiple very humorous characters including the dog it's written in a very engaging way she is telling the story directly to you like looking back at it um i re i really enjoyed it and i didn't know if i would so if you've read t kingfisher's work before and you weren't sure i would give the twisted ones a try and last but not least our 10th book this is the book that i read just a week ago i think so it's fresh and this was recommended by you guys it is dark shallow lies this book takes place on a tiny little island to the south of new orleans everyone there seems to have some kind of magic like a little bit of some kind of psychic ability right like somebody can tell you when you're gonna fall in love or somebody's going to tell you you know these these little things right and it's like population 12 like it's a it's an incredibly small town and our main girl whose name is gray she grew up there but after her mom passed away she moved in with her dad to go to school i think she's in arkansas and so she comes down every summer to spend time with the other summer children there are 10 of them that were all born the same summer so they're all they grew up together they're all really close but this summer is different because this summer her best friend has gone missing. They're all psychic, right? Like, shouldn't we know what happened to her? But their abilities just don't really work like that. A couple of them get these visuals of like water and death, but nobody can be like, she's dead, not missing. Like some people think maybe she just ran away, you know? And so we try to unravel that mystery but of course unraveling that mystery pulls on the thread of about a million others and things start to come out of the water that maybe some of the townspeople wanted buried for a long time and it was just creepy it was the bayou it was slow sticky summer there's an alligator that's always around i didn't trust anybody um it was just eerie and summery and gross so if you're afraid of hurricanes if you are afraid of alligators um maybe don't read it but yeah i thought um i put it together pretty quickly what was going on sort of um but i did really enjoy it it did really scratch that itch of like a very creepy summer feeling a missing girl hidden clues secrets upon secrets upon secrets 
dark and shallow lies. So that is my list. Let me know if I missed any. Let me know all of your recommendations because I'm really enjoying reading creepy books this summer. It's just making the darkness outside um, a little bit easier to handle. I really don't enjoy rainy season. Um, so yeah, leave me your recommendations or your thoughts down below. And so I will leave you here. Thank you always. And I hope you're reading something great. I will catch you guys next time. Hope you're having a great summer. If it's winter, I hope you're having a good winter as well. But anyway, I'm going to leave you here. Thank you always and catch you later. Okay.